Malaysia does it. Even now, when for the first time in recent Malaysian history, I think there has been fire bombings of churches. First time churches have been fire bombed, all because of a, obviously a very controversial decision allowing the use of Allah by Christians to say God. The advertise the advertisements for Malaysia go on hour on the hour until now visit Malaysia. We do not promote our country as much as others do. And that is a crucial job of a president to, to sell the country. As I was talking earlier with Jane, foreign policy is essential to the survival of the Philippines because of its geophysical location. It, the fact that it is an archipelago and the fact that it needs a lot of imports to survive. So uh, those are some of the things that a president must do to help not merely the corporate sector, but on a macro level, entrepreneurs and the like. Okay. So we can go on now to Jane. Next question. Yeah. Your question, Jane. Yes. Um, my question has to do with uh, one area that you were probably very comfortable with, disaster management, disaster yeah. risk management. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have been concerned that while we do know that we are in a disaster area and we're always hit by disaster, it seems that the budget uh, does not reflect that. Uh, Pag-asa is not given enough uh, resources to be able to buy the equipment it will need. Um, there has been a lot of corruption also. Pag-asa already bought it actually, that has been settled, but it took a lot of time. Yes, but that is one. The other one also is on the volcanic eruption. And then the but down the road, seeing that uh, Ondoy and Pepe were things which were not anticipated, uh, I mean, in the extent of the disaster was yes. not anticipated, what would you do uh, under your administration to ensure that our country is at least protected or provided the safety nets? There are several subsidiary plans for that, but it all boil down, boils down to one thing. It's resources. How do you get resources in order to finance the needed, uh, needed improvements no? uh, in what we call climate change adaptation? Would we get it from education? Will we get it from social services and the like? Uh, there are complaints that we spend too little on education, in health, in national defense, all because of the fact that we really have limited government revenue. So the first task really is to have more investments in your country so that you can get more public revenue. Because a trade-off can be made on a minute scale, but on a principal scale there should be more for all. We really cannot. For example, in national defense, for example, dedicated national defense. Right now it's multi-use national defense where uh, we have to sacrifice one mission for another. We only spend 0.1% of our GDP, which is really low, comparatively. In health, we're spending only 3% of GDP, but uh, it's bursting to the seams already. We have uh, 290 billion budget deficit. Uh, fortunately, the recent bond flotation of $1.5 billion was eagerly awaited by investors, and we got uh, 1.5 billion dollars in 20 and 30 year bonds, very cheap. Okay. So, for disaster risk reduction, with the caveat that resources are, 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 are really the most important thing, what do we need to focus on? A lot of focus by a lot of people is on global warming and climate change. But the Philippines produces less than 1% of the world's greenhouse gases. So what should the focus be? The focus should be, because we are victims of climate change and not climate makers, we should focus on climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction. What does that mean? Meaning to say that we accept that climatic phenomena will be more erratic, will be more intense, will be more severe. It doesn't happen only here, but in Florida, I think it snowed the other day or it iced up and uh, Europe has been seeing record snowstorms, winter storms. 
So right now, we have to build infrastructure in urban areas and adequately plan rural areas based on available information in a geohazard sort of way with, uh, according to the DENR 85% of the country has already been uh, geohazard map and only 15% remaining. On those areas not urbanized we have to have already laid down land use plans and those should be followed because the folly in Metro Manila if you listen to architect June Palafox was that the original plan for Manila done by Daniel Burnham in the 30s was not followed. Daniel Burnham was saying that Manila should have been an area of limited capacity. The focal point of Manila would be the Pasig River. Development would be astride the Pasig River and the development of Manila would be vertical. But after 1946, when we gained our independence, that plan was either uh, shelved or uh, because of uh, ignorance not followed. Rather than Paris as a design, uh, as a, as a uh, urban design plan, LA model was followed, where there's you know, sprawling land area, single level, single story bungalows, and a big, big metropolis. And the result, coupled with the fact that there's a reclamation of more than a thousand hectares in Manila Bay, which does clump. <coughs> exit points of water from the greater metro Manila area into Manila Bay, you have what we have. And there are more egregious violations like uh, the what they call the arenda, uh, uh, the arenda uh, area, Lupang Arenda, which is part of the lake bed, settled uh, informally and awarded knowing fully well that it is a lake bed. Several examples can be cited. Now you're going to have to redo that uh, to the tune of 208 billion pesos. There was a metro plan in the 70s, but out of 327 recommendations, only one was followed, and that was the LRT, and they changed the lines. There was the construction of a Mangahan floodway, which is supposed to drain water from the Marikina area into Laguna de Bay but the corresponding measure that was supposed to have been done alongside that, the construction of a Paranaque spillway, because right now, only there is only one way for water from Laguna de Bay to drain to Manila Bay, and that is the overloaded Pasig River. So, these things have to be redone. Costs a lot of money. Sadly, too, Safer does not necessarily mean cheaper. Sometimes it means more expensive things. The model would be, in, in terms of adaptation, to live with the disasters. And the perfect example would be Kandaba in Pampanga, where houses in flood-prone areas are really built on tall stilts. And during flooded, fl uh, flood times, when, when the Kandaba swamp is flooded, the bankas can go straight to the living rooms. Flood times, people make a lot of money through uh, built-in fish areas. It's not flood, they plant rice on, on fertile soil. And when it doesn't really rain, they plant watermelons. So they have adapted, but that's the exception rather than the rule. So right, there, there are also other structural measures that need to be done. Number one is the creation of the new Philippine Disaster Risk Management Agency rather than the NDCC. Number two is to, to change the paradigm because uh, the, under the NDCC, 